little demo today. We're not even really a demo, we're just showing you what the materials look like. Uh, this is copper sulfate pentahydrate in the form of a crystal. So it, this crystal incorporates water in the, um, in the crystalline structure of the material. Uh, this is just a powder of the same substance. This is still the hydrate. You see it's got a, a slightly lighter color. Now if I was to take this and put it in an oven at 120 degrees Celsius overnight, the next morning you would see a, a, a much lighter colored powder. It would be a, a very much lighter blue color, almost white, because it would drive off all the water. The high temperature of the 120 degrees Celsius would drive off the water. Uh, so given that, we're going to formulate a problem that involves finding the percent composition of a hydrate. The question says, hydrates are substances which include water in their crystal structure. Cupric sulfate, also known as copper 2 sulfate, forms hydrates. Pure cupric sulfate is a baby blue powder, while the hydrate is a royal blue crystal that you've seen over there. Uh, with the formula cupric sulfate dot 5H2O, the dot means that the water is incorporated into the crystal. A 12.34 gram sample of cupric sulfate pentahydrate is dried in an oven at 120 degrees Celsius overnight. Based on formulas of the two substances, predict the mass of the dried cupric sulfate. So the first thing we're going to do to answer the question is find out what the molar mass of cupric sulfate pentahydrate is. Remember, in chemistry, very, very often, if you go to moles, you're probably already on the way to solving the problem. So we're going to find out how many moles of cupric sulfate pentahydrate we have to begin with. And that is in that 12.34 grams. So the molar mass of copper, of uh, sulfur, uh, we get four times the oxygen, plus the water that's included, five times the uh, molar mass of water. Total molar mass of cupric sulfate is 249.686, sorry, cupric sulfate pentahydrate. We had 12.34 grams of it, so that equals 4.94 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of the hydrate. Now, uh, moving on to the next board, if one mole of the pentahydrate contains one mole of copper sulfate, therefore 4.94 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of the pentahydrate will contain 4.94 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of copper sulfate. Uh, so what I'm saying there is that the copper sulfate remains the same. The amount of copper sulfate remains the same. All you've done is driven off the water. So you still have the same amount of copper sulfate present. So let's find out what the molar mass of pure copper sulfate is without the water. It's 159.61 grams per mole. And uh, we have, we know that we have 4.94 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of copper sulfate. If we know its molar, molar mass and we know the number of moles, we can find out how many grams of that original 12.34 is just copper sulfate. It turns out it's 7.88 grams. So then the next question is, what percentage by mass of the hydrate is water? We do that by finding the difference in the mass between the hydrate and the dehydrated substance. So 12.34 minus the mass of the copper sulfate itself will give you the amount of water that was in it. And there was 4.45 grams of water in this particular sample that contained 12.34 grams of the whole thing. So then you take that number and divide it by the 12.34 times 100 to give you the percentage of water. So it's 36.0 percent, 36.08 percent water. In our textbook, we have a similar question, and our textbook is Brown and others, 10th edition, question number 354. The question asks: Epsom salts, a strong laxative used in veterinary medicine, is a hydrate which means that a certain number of water molecules are included in the solid structure. The formula for Epsom salts can be written as magnesium sulfate dot XH2O. So the X signifies that we don't know how much water is included in the crystal. Where X indicates the number of moles of H2O per mole of magnesium sulfate. When 5.061 grams of this hydrate is heated to 250 degrees Celsius, all the water of hydration is lost, leaving 2.472 grams of magnesium sulfate. What is the value of X? Uh, so we begin by writing the chemistry of what's going on. Here's the magnesium sulfate hydrate, and I put X there because I don't know what the proportion of moles of water to moles of magnesium sulfate is. The triangle here symbolizes heat being applied, and after the heat is applied, all you have is pure magnesium sulfate 
and the water has driven off in the form of vapor. So we'll start off by, by looking at the data. We, have, we started off with 5.061 grams of magnesium sulfate X hydrate, and we're left with 2.472 grams of pure magnesium sulfate. So we're going to find the molar mass of pure magnesium sulfate without water, and it tells us that we have 2.05 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of the magnesium sulfate, which means, when you multiply by the molar mass, uh, that Oh, sorry, we have 2.05 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of magnesium sulfate. The next thing is to find out how many moles of water has been driven off. So the, the crystal originally weighed 5.061 grams. After it was dried, it weighed 2.47, which means the difference in weight was caused by the evaporation of water, which means that 2.589 grams of the crystal was actually water. We divide by the molar mass of water, and it tells you how many moles of water we have. Now, we have the moles of water that were present in the crystal, and we have the moles of magnesium sulfate that was present in the crystal. That allows us to set up a proportion. Moles of H2O, and moles of, of, the, of magnesium sulfate, if you divide those two numbers, you get 6.997, which looks an awful lot like 7, which means the molar, uh, the mole fraction of H2O versus uh, MgSO4 is 7 to 1. So that's the structure of our crystal. It's magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. Incidentally, when you're doing a lot of these calculations, there are certain things that we do over and over again. Um, we're, always, almost all, we're almost always going to moles in our calculations. And just to remind you, I've shown you this in the notes before, if you want to go from grams to moles, just memorize this little diagram. It helps you a lot of the time. Grams divided by molar mass is going to give you moles of the substance. If you have the moles of the substance and you multiply by the molar mass, you get the grams of the substance. Likewise, if you have the moles of the substance and you multiply by the Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, you'll get number of atoms or molecules or whatever. And if you have the number of atoms or molecules and you divide by Avogadro's number, you'll get the number of moles. 